Hey everyone, Brandon from Glorious. Today, I'm super excited to talk to Anya and Francis. We're going to talk to me about NFTs and also the thesis project. So thank you guys for joining. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Uh, so I did uh, a develop interview with the thesis a couple of weeks ago. A lot of you guys were excited about it. And I kind of want to take a deep dive with, with the artists of this project. There's several artists, but you guys uh, have some art coming in the coming weeks. So I kind of wanted to just meet you guys. So thanks for taking the time to talk, but also just kind of talk about the NFT process, how you got involved with this project. Um, so maybe uh, ladies first, uh, Anya, if you want to explain maybe your background and art and how you got into NFTs and literally any, anything um, you know about yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, so I was doing, I moved to Vienna to study art in, I actually had like in-depth education in art. I studied the graphic design first, then I switched to photography school, new media and photography school in Moscow. I finished that. And then I went to, to study in Austria in the Academy of Fine Arts. I worked there, I studied there for eight years and worked for one year and um, kind of built my career, traveled the world. Um, but more like my work was always around like community based and uh, time based and process based kind of type of like practice. So I couldn't really find myself a niche through all those years. I started with a uh, internet art, like now it's post internet art. I was doing like uh, collaborating with a guy from Austria actually when I was like 17. Uh, it was like a Mariah Carey video she put out um, the video when she was like dancing sexy dancing <laughs> and the guy um the artist cut her off so there would be a chroma key behind her and um, i would just edit the video and a lot of artists were editing it and uh, putting our own like background behind so it would be kind of like youtube activism like back in the days and then <laughs> and then it was really hard to sustain myself as an artist to put the story like short and then i was also facing all sorts of discrimination from my gender to my nationality and like <laughs> to what I'm doing, which medium I'm using. It's always was a point like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it was just really hardcore. And at some point I was like, it was so hard for me that I, I, I felt like I quit the art and I moved back to Russia. It also was kind of because I went through harassment, institutional abuse in the university. And it was like, I was like, this is too much. I'm not doing art to fight the system like I'm, I am, but it's, not, it's kind of too much. And um, I did some, I created international shows in Moscow. It was really important for me to bring like my roots to just to engage, to make, a, to create a dialogue and so on. And um, so, so in March, when I heard that the NFT were kind of, um, I don't know, blooming, I started researching uh, through my network and turned out that a friend of mine with whom I was studying when I was 16, she's like a big NFT artist and uh, she meant that when the um, crypto kitties were... Um, crypto kitty, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a long time ago. So, <laughs> and now she started, so she started selling maybe in March and she was selling for like 70 euros, uh, 100 euros, 70 euros inch piece, which was for oh, her nice. a win. Yeah. yeah, and I started researching, so researching some contacts, and because I moved to Russia, my only contacts were like guys who would work in a, like kind of like mafia guy software. With a, <laughs> they, <laughs> the guy worked in a company. It's called uh, LukeSoft. They actually run uh, uh, crypto. Uh, what is it? Blockchain, blockchain elections in Zug in the, uh, 2004 like this type of guy wow, wow, wow. and i was yeah. telling them yeah i was like hi can you help me like call the smart contract i just want to meet this pixel work i had <laughs> it wasn't going anywhere and then i i participated in nft hack i actually was just listening to clubhouse and i was writing in my journal like wearables like <laughs> what is wearable and wearable and i was just like googling all the words and then i came across nft uh, hack and global if global and from there on, like my life changed. I met so many like amazing people and I, my faith in my practice and my art was already, I mean, I just feel so like loved by all the community and all the people I meet along the journey. And um, it was just super cool. I designed an NFT game with a, with a, uh, with a guy from Compound, uh, Jared, and uh, within two days, and it was shipped, like he deployed the contract on, on the second day and uh, he already shipped my NFT to Justin Sun con uh, wallet. And I didn't know who Justin Sun was, so I had to Google. <laughs> I had to Google his name. And then I saw him and I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like a rich dude, it's super cool. And then <laughs> and then I started getting like on Twitter, some Russian, Russian, um, Russian, not even context, uh, context um, commercials, but just like seeing 
he sweets in Russian as if Justin Sun is talking to me and saying like, hi, please buy my daughter. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, wow, this space is crazy. So yeah, and uh, when I did this game, there was like plus four, 400 characters uh, minted and birthed. And um, yeah, but it was such a weird experience because I didn't really own anything within the game. So I felt like I minted something, but I didn't really. And within within this project, I feel like I'm like, as if I'm practicing my normal practice, I'm engaging with the community, searching for artists and seeing my work like within the context of collective kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know how to say like setting group. Yeah, so that's pretty much my. Story. Yeah, so you so like you've gone pretty much sounds like through it all, and then you've landed on <laughs> yeah. NFTs. So uh, <laughs> and yeah, it seems to be. And I mean, I'll ask that question about like how much NFTs has impacted you, and it seems like it has a lot. But uh, I did want to give Francis a chance to give mm -hmm. his background before I dive into it to my questions. Sure. Well, Anya, that was great hearing your background. That's an incredible Thanks. story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for myself, I've been creative. Um, you know, since high school, I, I, I got into music and, and making music. And, you know, my parents were always, um, you know, inspiring me to you know, be creative and encouraging me to be creative. In college, I, you know, I got a BFA in graphic design and kind of found my style as a painter, as an artist. Um, doing like a layer design with, with bright colors, um, kind of from there, being creative and, and being an artist just became part of my MO. Um, really everything I did, um, jobs I would gravitate towards, became a showing painter, um, kind of in the different towns that I lived in, in Long Island, New York. Then I moved to California to go to graduate school for advertising, um, joined a few art groups there, continued with the showing gallery scene there. And then in March of this year, NFT world kind of hit me by storm and the same as what Anya was saying you know I was on the way home from from work listening to NPR and I heard a, a story about people selling a piece for 70 million after that I immediately went home and started looking it up and found out everything I need to know about the space the last few months have been a whirlwind to say the least um, it's pretty inspiring to be honest with you I think this is a digital movement that's happening and I think as creators we're on the forefront. There's opportunities for us to network and connect with people from all over the world. And it's inspiring to watch and witness and be a part of. Yeah, um, I've seen both of you guys' artwork um, and it's both amazing and great. And you guys, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to talk to you guys. Um, yeah, uh, I have a, I don't know if this is frowned about, I have a fake people right behind me. I That's... don't see it. Can you show it a little bit? Oh, geez. Uh, it's, to, uh, <laughs> it's that right side. There. Fake people. It's just, uh, well, it's like, nice. a, uh, see, again, I don't want him going after me, his legal team, because we're talking about official <laughs> NFTs, things like that. <laughs> My wife, unfortunately, wouldn't let me buy a real Beeple, so I had to settle for printing one off Amazon Prints. So uh, hopefully no one goes after me. But no, um, I, I think that's, uh, I'm a huge art fan. I appreciate all you guys. But uh, yeah, I, that was my question. Like, I assumed as an artist that came from traditional background, things like that, that when the NFTs, when you guys first, because I heard first had NFTs, I was like, is NBA top shot? And so like, you know, basketball, <laughs> yeah, basketball. Exactly. So I'm like, oh, cool. I could collect LeBron James. But for you guys, it must've yeah. been like, I don't know, may, may, dare I say like life-changing or like how, like how impactful has that been? Like, is your focus like hundred percent NFTs and like, this is your, like your new future. But so I don't know, like, um, yeah, maybe you could share your thoughts or experiences, I guess. I mean, I'll go real quick first and just say it's changing my life right now. I know that much. Um, I've become a partner with an NFT collection called Holly Weirds. Holly Weird with a Z at the end. And we're, we're at a great place, got a great community, and we're providing a great utility for our collectors, uh, creating this royalty program with our store and website, which will be coming out soon. You know, with my personal art outside of that, I've minted on Hen, on Hicket Nook. Um, I haven't, I haven't uh, minted personally on OpenSea yet, but I see that in the near future. It's just a playground if you're creative, to be honest. And there's a lot of opportunities to network as a creative person, whether and, and join a team, you know, whether that's as a as yeah. a creative strategist, as a designer, as an artist, you know, helping other artists, you know, with their business management. Because I think what's going on now is we have all these collections that are turning into brands. So all these, you know, collections are forming teams. So if you're creative in the space, there's a lot of opportunity. It's it's, it's very exciting. Cool. Anya, did you want to cool. comment? I think, yeah, it sounds great. I mean, Francis, this is awesome. I'm kind of lost, I have to say, because uh, I'm, kind of, <laughs> I'm getting dizzy a little bit from all the possibilities. And uh, I'm kind sure. of <laughs> not yeah, really lucky sure. with that. A lot of offers, like when people say, oh, I'm going to change your life. 
uh, startup <laughs> culture. I'm kind of tired. I'm like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's tiring. Yeah, that's good. And, that's and, a good, yeah, that's know, a good like, word to say. Like opportunity, like lots of opportunities, and like, like yeah, what should we focus on? But it's like, yeah, it's just like a good problem to have. But yeah, it's kind of like yeah. hard to. It's overwhelming. It could be what, overwhelming. Maybe, yeah. this is, maybe this is a good, a good way. Uh, actually, if anybody is interested in uh, creating or discussing and brainstorming how we could make like a creative economical DAO together, if we have uh, my model would be like we have a talent base, like different artists. And we have some kind of governance within our community, and we, I really, I really want to apply quadratic voting like someday in some community. And if you want to try to do it with me, please contact me. I would love to. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll definitely put your guys' information, your profiles. Everyone has to see um, <laughs> yeah. you guys' work and things like that, which I'm super excited about. And I think one thing that you guys um, uh, are coming up with soon is this uh, collection, a CC collection. Um, and I know that's coming in a couple of weeks, but maybe how you guys got involved with that. I guess we we're talking about opportunities and I guess this is just one like great opportunity that, um, approached you. So maybe you guys could talk about how they, um, you know, how they approached you and how that came to light and like, how are you excited about that, uh, project? Oh, no, you in, would you want to go first? Um, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was participating in this NFT hack and actually I've done such a great project that Martin already saw my work. And uh, he posted in the uh, in the jobs uh, on on Discord uh, in the jobs hashtag or whatever sub sub uh, and that they have this amazing project. And I, for one year, I was trying to launch like a super arty luxury delivery of wines and uh, mm. coffee and like uh, whatever all the bio product products here in Moscow and uh, restaurants. I, I I it was kind of all set. But uh, I was just hearing no's and no's and no's. And then when he presented me the idea, I was like, wow, this is what I wanted to do for a year. And now you kind of know it's online. So yeah, that was really cool. So I found about the, the uh, project through a Discord channel I was in, um, the project called Bitwine. Now we're rewind for a second real quick. When I first found out about this space in March, I wasn't on Twitter. You know, Through my art, I was mainly promoting on Instagram. You know, my website, pretty organic methods. Um, like I said, be, being a showing painter uh, primarily, I found out pretty quickly you had to be on Twitter to, to be in the know. And then, and then even beyond that, I, I found out you had to be in these Discord channels to, to know when these drops happen. So, you know, when I first joined the space as a collector, I would search the hashtags, you know, unofficial punks and pretty much any alt punk project I, I, I try to get in in the beginning. And then from there, I started to really fall in love with this 8-bit art generation that was happening with, with, with NFTs. And um, it was pretty unique to me. I have a background in wine as much as I do in art. So I found this project called Bitwine, who is creating these wonderful 8-bit illustrations of, um, you know, um, which would represent real life bottles of wine. Um, I was in wine in, um, in Napa Valley for almost... Uh, almost a decade. So immediately I gravitated towards this project called Bitwine. You know, they have, I have a Screaming Eagle, um, you know, NFT in my collection right right now. But um, basically, you know, Martin from a CC, he reached out in the Bitwine Discord channel looking for artists. And, you know, from there, I just saw the opportunity and just jumped on it. Uh, well, why don't you um, actually explain a CC? I could do it myself, but I probably don't <laughs> do it. Martin, I don't want Martin. So Martin, we keep referencing Martin. Martin is one of the founders of a CC. Uh, he helped connect us. So maybe if one of you guys wanted to explain what a CC is, you guys probably would probably do a better job uh, than than I would. Probably oh, be cool hearing both of our perspectives, Annie. If you want to give your take, and then I'll I'll add a little bit after. Mm, you go first. I need to think a little okay. bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. <laughs> you know, I think a CC is neat because, you know, now with NFT projects and all these, you know, 10,000, you know, profile pick projects, people want to see utility. And I think that's the next generation of what's, you know, going to last value wise, you know, utility, token base, you know, the whole V friend situation where you have this like ticket to a, to a, you know, to a you know, special conference, like this idea of a token base of utility to the NFT. So, so with the CC, you know, it's really jumping on that idea and, and, and even going one step further and, um, you know, linking through the smart contracts on the blockchain, just this, you know, special ticket to an exclusive harvest in Greece where, you know, we're only harvesting by hand, you know, 11 bottles of this olive oil. You know, I've worked in wine production. I've, I've harvested grapes. I've harvested olive oil. I've, I've bottled olive oil by hand. 
you know, it's no small task. And so there's a, it, it's a labor of love that's going to go into each bottle and just having the art connected to it, each artist creating a physical label on the bottle that would be shipped to you, you know, and, and actual, you know, having that artist represent their art in the NFT also, it's, it's really a special and, and unique project. Yeah. Yeah, to me also, the um, I think it's really cute that we have this har a proof of harvest. I just love it. It's, and also that the way I'm really curious about the uh, protocol, like, like for me, a protocol was the main, not the main, but as I said, like I, I thought about this idea for like for such a long time and I researched, mm -hmm. I actually developed like a fungi based uh, Hitazan paper, like a bio based material. And I was really like, nerdy about like um, agriculture here and uh, in I lived in Austria for eight years and there it's like super crazy about uh, they all really crazy about organic and bio and super beautiful and like rich wine scene there as well so it was something for me everything kind of collided because I was really into NFTs plus uh, Thomas is a second uh, second developer he is uh, lives in Austria so we kind of understood each other and now I was like craving this like Austrian vibe in my Discord and that was just like amazing. And yeah, I just, I don't know. I really enjoyed them as well. Like, and just feeling like for me, it's really important. Like people are really important to me and the vibe. And so that was just perfect. And everything what Francis said, I couldn't say it better. So, you know, and, yeah. and I think it's important too. Sorry, Brent, um, from the perspective of a collector and that, you know, I think you really, as a collector, you invest in the team, you know, as much as you do with the art. And Thomas and Martin are two of the most incredibly brilliant people that I've had a chance to know in the short span of time. Um, you know, what they're building is, um, is you know, new to the space. And, and I feel like, you know, a few years from now, looking back, there's going to be a lot more that are going to be following suit um, and doing what they're starting now. So we're involved with something, you know, it's called the Genesis Project for a reason. This is a ground level of, of this, this idea of a smart project with a with a real life bottle of olive oil that'll be shipped to you. It's it's pretty special. Yeah, I was trying I to get some. Saw, wait, oh, I was just saying, I was trying to get some information out of them because yeah, they're starting with olive oil. They're thinking about expanding to other things. So I'm like, you know, and I don't know how to say those <laughs> other things. So something for the product. I was trying to get out of them, but it sounds like yeah, just uh, this is literally the genesis, the beginning. So yeah, they they have some ideas with me, but I don't want to go. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, so Anya, go ahead. There was this other project, Sake. Have you seen it? Like Sake, Sushi Swab made it. No, oh, no, yeah, they, here, but... is it like physical bottles? Um, of like... It's kind of the same. It's exactly the same as ours, but then they start. It's also like super old brewery of sake in Japan. It's existed mm. since like 18th century. And uh, but they start to there's amazing like architecture bureau who made the bottle and uh, they start to ship like you as well. You buy it as NFT, but they start to ship it as soon. They, they have their own like uh, exchange aggregator. And you hmm. have to swap uh, whatever coin you have to the sake coin. And as soon as you swap, they start to ship you. They, they pack your sake. And I, <laughs> and I even reached to the founder, uh, to the guy behind. Like, he also has this amazing history with sake. He's like super knowledgeable about it. And uh, yeah, and they also supported us. They were saying that this is amazing. And it was really, really important to us as well to he he hear feedback because it was Non-profit. I mean, it's not non-profit now with the auction, but we worked like six months with nothing, investing our time and money. So it was really cool to, yeah. Brent, were you? Like, uh, oh, okay, sorry. no good. Were you into um like alt cryptocurrency before the NFT craze or at all or? No, I actually got um so so like you guys are just talking about like blockchain things like that. Like you guys are like super knowledgeable. Uh, I'm supposed to be like the expert here, but like. Uh, and I don't say as artists, I mean, you guys are artists, but also you guys are super knowledgeable, <laughs> more, even more than I am. And it seems like you're super passionate about that stuff. So it's great. Like you're both, but no, I was, I got into the crypto space because I started getting to NFTs actually first. Um, I'm very basic. So I was like into NBA top shot because I watched a lot of basketball, yes. but like, that's how that was my first. Uh, then I started learning about like you know, crypto punks and things like that. And uh, kind of like the technology and things like that. Like one of my first YouTube channels, I'm never going to say the actual name, but someone has to find <laughs> it was specifically talking about NBA top shop, uh, NFTs and things like that. Cause I was like super interested in it, but um, nice. Uh, so, yeah. Anya, you, you might know this. And there was a cryptocurrency called V chain that I think we're trying to do like some sort of smart contract at one point with, um, with bottles uh, specifically in like, in Asian countries, there's um, you know a lot of knockoffs happening, and I don't know, did, uh, have you heard of that? Uh -huh. 
it's different from what Assisi is doing, but I know they were mm-hmm. um, just like a like like a proof of ownership, uh, just mm-hmm. bringing utility to to that cryptocurrency. But I don't know. That was maybe a year and a half ago. Nice. I'm not sure where that's gone since. But I would yeah, actually I think... love to hear about top sh- top shots because I for me it's <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't <laughs> I'm a top shot guy too. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, no, I could go, I could spend another hour talking. I mean, talk, I don't know. It's, um, I think the whole idea is because it's like, uh, I think when I think of NFT, one portion of thing is like rarity, I think is like really important. I think for NBA mm-hmm. top and shot, like the rarity, like the supply, like for every player there's becoming like, you know, in the beginning, maybe there was like one, two moments. Now there's like 20, 30 for each or something like that. Something like rarity thing. So like, obviously talking about TC, like having those 11, um, I think is good. And then moving on to the next potentially the next thing I don't want to spoil anything, but the next physical product, uh, I think is interesting, you know, like, um, keeping it rare and keeping, I think it's like, that's really important. Like, that's the thing. Like if you make an NFT and you're like, Oh, here's a hundred of them or a thousand copies. I don't think the value is not going to be there. I think, um, you know, that's pretty obvious. So, um, and that's what people, people like, uh, you don't want people like me that end up like printing on amazon <laughs> sorry that's probably the worst i'm telling artists is i'm thinking they're on the artwork uh-huh. and um, you know that's i think that's okay because i think the value comes in the technology yeah, even more than exactly. the art really mm-hmm. and you know what what you're buying is is a is, is a legacy item that's that exists on this blockchain and this technology space that and, and you know if you have something printed on your wall that's fantastic you're supporting the art you're supporting the movement but you know the holders of this item in its technology space is is where the value is yeah and, and I also think i mean culture should be accessible so it's yeah. cool <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. yeah yeah i think that's something that we don't talk about it's like yeah like this makes it global things like that and makes it accessible to like everyone in the world i think you're talking about it. and that really resonated with me where you had an instagram and then you realize based off of space, like, oh, I need to be marketing my online presence more. So I got to have a Twitter. And I kind of felt the same thing. Like, oh, I have a YouTube channel. Okay, I'll just stay on YouTube. It's like, nope, if I want to talk to people and get in the community, I got to be ingrained in Twitter. And I got to be in like Telegram or you said Discord and things like that. And it's like, <laughs> you know, hey, can I see your artwork rather than showing them like a physical picture? I don't know how that's how people show a physical picture of this artwork. Well, here's like a link on the blockchain. And like, this is where I am. This is my nft collection on OpenSea and things like that i think is um yeah so to be honest I, I think the biggest challenge as creators for us right now is just finding that balance in your life because it's a playground of opportunity and you know how do you balance your day job with your family with with your nft you know with yourself as a content creator i mean we're all content creators in this space you know in this conversation right now so really how do you prioritize your time and i think a lot of creators and artists are experiencing burnout and not talking about it because I mean, there's no way to avoid it. It's, it's, it's overwhelmingly obsessive with opportunity. And I think really it's, it's important to have conversation about, you know, setting boundaries with yourself with, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, not going to stay up until four in the morning, you know, finding the next project or, you know, advancing my project to this space, but, you know, balance that I think we'll circle back in a few months and be like, we all need more balance because it's overwhelmingly exciting. Yeah, you guys need agents. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like I want like it's like that that's true. Like I got it like you guys like for, should be focusing on like art, right? Like that's the that's what you guys, you guys are the artists. You guys you guys are focused on art and wow. you know, you have someone that just helps with like all these things and like find the opportunities, things like that. The best use of your time is like you being creative and doing that stuff, unless you really love doing the business part of it. But <laughs> the idea is that you know there's so much opportunities out there. If having you focus on it, um, on, on actual art and creating NFTs and things like that, I think is thing. So um, I'm sure there's agencies out there. And if I was an artist, an <laughs> NFT agency, if I'm sure that's a thing. It'd be like, well, I want to make sure that I'm yeah. working with the best. So, yeah. And that's why it's important for artists and creatives and anyone in this space to, to team up with, with projects. And I think when, when guys are attacking projects, you know, alone or solo, you know, it's it's a daunting task to keep up, you know, because momentum is everything and you have to strike while the iron's hot. But at the same time, you have to think, you know, long term, you know, as well as, you know, capturing the opportunity of the, you know, the short term. So it's, you know, power in numbers. And, and as creatives, you know, a team is important. And with the CC, you know, we have 11 creatives plus Martin and Thomas and our Discord you know, community now. So, you know, we have a team that's that's helping us. So we certainly don't feel alone. Yeah, community, I think, is like a big, like, yeah, I think that makes sense because you're not, like, for me, like, on YouTube as a content creator, it's like, you know, I'm not really going to do videos with other people, but if you're working with other artists, it's like, 
oh, what's our collection going to be? And then maybe if you, they were like, collection, like, oh, hey, I'm doing this new collection. Hey, uh, I'll reference you to this uh, other project. And you kind of just keep going and things like that. And I think that's, uh, that's in it, it's interesting. Um, yeah. So that, that definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. And I think it, a thesis is just like an interesting project. I think they said like when they're actually going to be um, pick, making the olive oil, Martin was kind of walking me through the process. Of, like They're going to do like a live stream and you're going to pick your trainer. Like I knew nothing about olive oil <laughs> like that. I was, like, I was like, can you only do that once a year? And he was like, knowing the intricacies of it. And I was like, yeah, like it's uh, you can't do it every week, uh, essentially. Um, so they kind of want to have that like real life if you if you get the nft like okay you pick the tree or the bush or whatever uh yeah, yeah, and tree, you kind of go tree. through the process which is unique yeah so and the trees are 300 years old <laughs> oh yeah so, i saw the doc they have this document i'll have to link it it's really good where they talk about it's it really good yeah um and they're really like super passionate about that was one of my first questions i felt bad for asking i was like oh how come out of all the things in the world olive oil but they were very passionate about olive oil and then um yeah just make it which i think is yeah. great um yeah and it's, turn it's, out that there's a black market not really black but it's not <laughs> really yeah you know but that the olive market market turned out to be a little scam and i'm like such a fan of olive oil and uh, <laughs> that broke my dreams that it's healthy for you because a lot of oils are not really clean <laughs> and so on not not so many regulation of the market and the market so yeah <laughs> and it, it's wild too just with olive oil you know where it's come in the past decade you know when you think of your your wine tasting events or the wine world you know now people go to these olive oil you know farms and and um and they do olive oil tasting and and they you know mm -hmm. with spoons and and you know when when you harvest the olive oil you know depending on the stage of the tree and and, and the coloration of the you know the fruit you know you can get various peppers and perfumes uh you know you know aromas depending on the timing of the harvest and it's really become this you know subcategory of wine now as far as the experience of the consumer it, it's pretty awesome to see yeah so let's talk about um i guess so right now there is one on like rareable i'll put the link in the description that's like up for auction mm -hmm. right now i know you guys are having yours um, coming up in the near future, I think Anya's yours is first in a couple of weeks. And then 20 Francis. days. Also. Yeah, oh, 20 days. See, I counted down the days. So I'll, put the, <laughs> I'll definitely put the link in the description and let my community know when you guys list it so everyone can jump on it. But uh, how much, I mean, obviously you're involved in the NFT creation of it, but are you involved with like the olive oil part or like maybe you could talk about the specific, uh, I don't even know. So again, I don't want to get in trouble. You guys get in trouble about the artwork <laughs> specifically because I know it's 20 days out, ever like that, but um, like, what was your inspiration for this specific piece of artwork for this NFT? Um, yeah, I don't know. If, yeah. Again, if there's, if that's spoilers, if you're not to say, but um, generally, if there's something that you want no, to No, it's do. cool. I think, who, <laughs> Francis, do you want to go first? Or? You can go and go after. Well, I'm, because it, for me, it's some kind of like esoteric of, again, uh, completion of a circle or a cycle and so on. So I, I, when I was living in Vienna, I used to go around and uh, collect like, uh, at some, like for some reason I was finding like super antique books just on the street. And uh, I was collecting the books and scanning some pages and uh, uh, in a super high resolution and uh, yeah, just collecting them as a digital, some kind of archive. And then I, yeah, I just got this idea that um, for this, like, my, you know, there's this, like, Viennese, uh, what is it, Vienna woods? It's like a, a forest with some mythology behind it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I found this uh, image on my laptop and I thought, wow, this is perfect. It has nothing to do with ice thesis in a way, <laughs> but uh, it has to do with, uh, with my relationship with Thomas and this feeling that I get when I interact with the project. And uh, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be just like this uh, forest uh, it's antique graphics so i and i wanted to spice it up a little 3d effect and it's going to be like a hollow background and it's kind of the same work as a when you get the bottle uh, it's going to be like hollow sticker with a black black print and uh, just the yeah the work is like drift with the with a hollow effect so it's yeah, kind of uh... easy Simple. When I was talking to Martin uh, last time, he was saying like, because I was asking well, what are the NFTs going to look like, and he said it's like I'm gonna, it could be whatever. It could, it's up to them to choose. Like, he doesn't want like eleven NFTs of like a, yeah. a tree or a bush of like. So he's like whatever they want to do. But that's the reason they got like eleven artists from like different backgrounds and things like that. It's yeah. like we want to give you the creative freedom. So it's awesome that you're. Uh, I also you know, I'm really proud that I invited two of my favorite like artists, Amanda and Will. 
and we'll actually uh, pr produce a video for Balenciaga 2020, the fake news video. And he worked with like big brands and he's really like, he was my teacher in Vienna and uh, he gonna make uh, a cat, uh, like an animated cat with two baguettes and she's saying, man, I just love volleyball, man. <laughs> 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 like super stupid nice we'll have but... to wait for that yeah well i mean all of my they all sound really really good <laughs> he's like oh that yeah. would be my masterpiece uh but no i think it's, they all sound super like like uh creative and innovative and like very obviously very different which is great i think that's what they're going yeah. for um so yeah francis did you want to if again i don't want to uh, if you don't want any spoilers or something like that. Um, no, that's okay. I know when I first uh, was was tasked with coming up with a label, I immediately thought of creating a painting because that's kind of my bread and butter as a fine artist. But, um, you know, I wanted to jump into the NFT space a little bit more and expand what I'm comfortable with with making. So I created some 8-bit illustrations for CCD as their logo design. And, and um, we have, um, have them as emojis in our Discord channel now. Oh. Um, so once I learned that process, it was really addicting and and you know first of all it was it was easy to figure out and as a creative you know it's just another paintbrush it was fun to do um so i created this 8-bit illustration of um of an olive tree i animated it um just as far as i'll go but it's a it, it's a fun animated uh 8-bit illustration of an olive tree cool so i'll definitely let my community know when your guys is um NFTs are coming up. There's one live right now. I think it's going to expire in like two, three days. Mm -hmm. It's of uh, an octopus or something, right? Is that right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Major art. Yeah, she's um, she's an incredible artist. Yeah, and it's on yeah. Rarible. Uh, and I'll put a link uh, in the description. And there's been already some bids on it, which is great. So um, let's get some more bids bids on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you guys are on Rarible. And uh, I'm not actually familiar with Rarible. Uh, I think it's just like OpenSea, but um, yeah, it's a little, it it's a little bit more exclusive. I, I don't want to use the word exclusive, but but I think that prices go for a little bit more on um, Rarible, and it might be more one of ones than than OpenSea with the. I don't think a lot of ten thousand piece um, profile pick projects are dropping on Rarible. Got it. Right. So right, right. a little bit of a different market, but um, actually, uh, it's two Russian guys who made it, so I feel a little bit related, and also. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Rarible offered us to, um, we did this interview with you and uh, I mean, Martin did the interview with yeah. you and then the Rarible reached out to him and they were like, oh, yeah. we want you to be on our uh, like page. And uh, actually we have our own contract and we wanted to make our own uh, marketplace. But because Rarible reached out, uh, we purchased, like we, we, we agreed to purchase, I don't know how to say, like means there and so on. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but, but they didn't support the realities which we made for our contract. And we also, because of the forest uh, burn, we, um, forest fires, we, uh, we donate some part. I actually don't know which percentage we donate, but we donate some to the, to the uh, yeah, particular charity, which is supporting, uh, like recovering for the against, I mean, no, sorry, I'm just <laughs> lost my, my yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I'm looking on the variable side now. It looks really great. I mean, uh, OpenSea is good too. I, 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 that's what I was kind of figuring out. Like, I don't know, for you guys, I think there's, when we think of opportunity, there's so many places that you can yeah. put your artwork and things like that. Like, yeah, I guess maybe you just put it open, everywhere. <laughs> OpenSea has quickly become the, the eBay for NFTs. I think in, uh, in April, I think that that's what they were kind of set up as. Um, um, so that's, that's where I do most of my... Um, shopping and you know almost, cool. where most of my time is spent but yeah and it's good like i i talk about and i know a lot of projects that are trying to have like nft marketplaces etc i've talked about a couple none of them have i don't think came out but it seems like a lot of people are focusing on whether it's tools or um uh things like that that uh marketplaces for you guys to give out and for me it's like give you guys as much opportunity as much tools whatever you need as much exposure and then um you know use whatever um, is best for you and gets you the highest sales and the most eyes on your project, et cetera. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I'm looking at some of these collections on Rarible and yeah, they're very, uh, I mean, the prices are up there. So yeah, definitely. It is. It's a different pungy animal. Penguins, uh, pungy yeah. penguins, I guess. Is, I know. Uh, yeah. And it's funny. And so you have, you know, open sea might be kind of that middle territory and, you know, in the basement for underground artists to thrive is this hick and nook on, on hen. You know, it's on a different blockchain on the Tesla's blockchain. I don't know, Brent, if you spent a bunch of time looking in there or not, but 
I and haven't heard Anya, that. You said it. This is the second time you said it, and I haven't heard of that before. So, so Hen, um, H-E-N at Hicketnunk, H-I-C-E-T-N-U-N-C. -E I don't know, Anya, have, have you been on there? But it's fantastic. First of all, there's no gas. Well, minimal gas. Um, it's better for the environment, right? Um, because of the uh, blockchain technology that they're using, um, just different standards. Um, but it's more about the art and less about profits, if that makes sense. And I'm not saying artists shouldn't profit, but um, it's pretty neat. You can find some independent artists creating some pretty cool stuff on there. I'm checking out right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, because of the paywall, it's more, it's flourishing because there's no paywall, let's say, right? Or Yeah. But basically in April, I think when, so in OpenSea, like, just started going crazy in March and, and then beginning of April. And then all of a sudden, like this period of maybe a week or two when there was just outrageous gas for everyone. And mm -hmm. I think around that time, Hick and Nunk mm -hmm. kind of got introduced as this alternative like hipster platform for, you know, um, where, where you can mint NFTs and, and, and you don't have to be concerned with gas. And I think at that point it became like this steampunk NFT marketplace that, um, you know, has just had this calling like that. Um, that's, it's been pretty neat to see. And there's been a few campaigns um, you know, that, that have helped people just get involved. Yeah. I was just checking it out and stuff like that. Like, yeah, see, steampunk is probably a good, yeah. uh, <laughs> good, uh, good uh, for, uh, um, but yeah, but it's great that there's all these, that's what I was kind of like wondering, like, yeah, how do you decide? But I guess like you kind of have your art, you see, um, you know, what you, obviously maybe you go to OpenSea because it's most popular, et cetera, but some of these like niches and things like that about where the eyes are, I think is a good, but again, being part of the community, advertising yourself, and maybe they're like, they reach out to you or, you know, like, hey, maybe we should do our collection here. This is where you think be successful. Um, I mean, ultimately I a there's, yeah. there's a lot of opportunities. There's an avenue for each, if you think about it. I mean, Hick and Nook is a great place to, to gain collectors, uh, gain a community. You're not gonna necessarily, you know, it, it won't turn into your day job on, on Hick and Nook, but you can gain a following, gain, gain community and, and, you know, transfer that community over into OpenSea and Rarible where now all of a sudden this could become your, your main job or your main source of income because you've, you've harnessed this, you know, community organically on these alternative platforms. And I think that's, that's where the true value is in it. Yeah. And going back, talking about NBA Top Shot, one final time is like, if you want to show off your NBA Top Shot collection, you got to go to NBA Top Shot, right? Like their, their website. But this is like, you know, like an open sea. It just doesn't matter what the product, you could just have it on there uh, and having one central place. Obviously, you know, it's fine if you have multiple uh, rareable open sea, but the idea is that um, at least your collection is going to a place you could display it versus not having to be forced on one specific website for one <laughs> specific uh, NFT collection is my point. So, um, but no, that's great. Um, and so, yeah, um, I appreciate your guys' time today. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time. I know you guys are busy with those opportunities. I'm sure you guys missed like a hundred uh, messages on Twitter. But I don't know if there's anything last that you guys wanted to say about um, yourself or the NFT market or a thesis. Uh, I'm definitely going to put your guys's information in the description of this video profile. I mean, so like, yeah, maybe that's a good question. Like if I'm saying, okay, if I, I, you get, I'm not gonna give you guys one link, but if I was to give you one link of how to show off your artwork these days, yeah, I would have thought it's Instagram, but maybe nowadays it's different. Is it, do I show you guys on open C? Do I, is, do I just show you? I mean, I know you guys have extensive link trees, so that's, that's helpful <laughs> too, but uh, yeah, like I guess there's none, there's not one place that, uh, which is fine. But yeah, I was just kind of wondering. Um, I think we came up to the conclusion that we have to sh like, uh, not bombard, but we you have to have some yeah. sort of strategy on all channels. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. your audience is spread, so. Yeah, I think Anya, your, your link tree has um, 20 <laughs> links and stuff like that. But yeah, that makes sense. Like this is, yeah, this is where you're, you're yeah. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. Like that's that's the thing. It's like, I don't, uh, even like for me as a content creator, like, yeah, like I post everywhere, everywhere that I can. Right. But there's definitely <laughs> places where I don't post, like I don't do TikTok or I don't do, mm -hmm. I, I do a little bit Instagram. Yeah. I don't, I do Reddit, but I don't definitely don't do discord, which I know for sure is like probably hurting me somehow, but it's like, yeah. How do you keep up with all this opportunity, which is a good thing, but, um, but yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Focusing on, on a few, I think is, is, is the key, but it's tough because like you said, if you're not if you're not in some, then you're missing audience. Cool. So I appreciate you guys uh, joining me today. Again, I didn't know if you want to say anything final before I, um, we sign off. But, um, so Brent, with the um, 
so with the links that you include in this, can we drop any links in the in the chat here? And I, I know you might pull from the um, from the link tree, but I think I have a few links. Um, some OpenSea collection that that, that I'm a T on, um, that I'm a team member on, and um, I'll probably provide that, and probably my my personal website, and and I'm sure that you'll have the CC link. But I'll yeah, probably we've been talking that. about your guys' artwork, so I definitely want my community to see your guys' artwork. <laughs> yeah. We can talk about all we want, and so definitely I'll do. Uh, yeah, CC. Uh, because that's coming up for you guys. It's an awesome collection. One's going on right now and it's going to be ongoing. I think there's going to be something from a thesis literally for the next, I don't know, two months straight, yeah, 11 totally weeks straight, I guess, if my mm -hmm. math's right. Uh, and they have it planned out also. I'll definitely keep you guys up. I'll keep my community up there on that. And I'll definitely post your guys' links. Any links you guys want me to include, uh, I want to show off your guys' work. So uh, I know my community is excited to see what you guys have coming up. So Anya, were you going to say something? Um, I just want to say thank you so much for being interested in our project to doing those two interviews and just being really opening up to us and our project, our thoughts and so on. It's really important to me personally. I think it's really important to everyone in the community, in our community. So it's just super awesome. And the link, I have this link tree, so access to That's Twitter. probably the best. Yes, yes. I'll definitely include you guys' link tree and then anything specific. <laughs> um but yeah let me know again i'm i'm always happy to catch up with you guys just i mean it's nice meeting this is the time for, first time we met but um i love i never get to talk to nft artists or um so i think it's like awesome my community is definitely like always asking me to like talk to more nfts and the process and things like that um so it's great to get that overview on how you know your background you got into nfts and what you're excited about and all the opportunities which is i, I thought was great so appreciate you guys this time we definitely have to catch up i'm definitely gonna let my community know when you're a thesis um, comes uh, collection uh, comes mm -hmm. out. So yeah, um, awesome. I appreciate you guys. Thanks uh, for joining me today. Thank thanks you for having us. All right, thanks everyone. Catch you guys later. Bye. 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 Bye.